Next week's update is Ushing. Ushing, unreadable. Get Cosmo on Ushing. the phone. Bro, it's Ushing in a new season, baby. <laughs> One more time. It's Ushing in a new season and a big sandbox update to go with it. We have already covered ability tuning, armor, mod changes. Oops. Now it's time to go over the changing of the weapons. Here's the weapons feature lead, our good old friend, Chris Proctor. Good day. It's Chris again. We've got a lot to talk about in Season 15, including stasis weapons, a rework mm. of fusion rifles, and several changes intended to make weapons more relevant in the new activity and with new artifact mods. Let's kick off by clarifying some terminology. And this is going to be big. Dude, a rework of fusion rifles? I'm, uh, I'm you, you have my attention. Continue reading. I'm here for it. The definition <laughs> of the terms. Some of the recent yeah. info on weapons we've put out has been confusing, but while yes. I generally like to use our internal terms for concepts where possible, in some cases these require too much explanation to them externally. So here are some of the definitions. Fall off. Internally we use fall off min and fall off max, meaning Good the call. start and end. But moving forward we'll use these uh, externally, using damage as an example, but the same logic applies to aim assist and whatnot. Damage fall off start is the distance at which damage fall off begins or stops doing the maximum damage. The damage fall off end is the distance at which fall off ends or hits the damage floor. That is such a helpful change. I've yes. had a lot of people come in and be like, what does fall off minimum mean? It's like, okay, what he's talking about is like the, the point where fall off damage begins and when fall off damage ends. So as an example, it's really important. Fusion rifle with liquid coils does 49 per bolt. Yeah. That's the damage fall off start. It stops doing maximum damage. It has fall off. So it goes to 40 per bolt. Eventually it hits the floor. And for those high impact fusions, it's 24 mm -hmm. damage. So no matter what, they could be 100 <laughs> meters away, 3000 meters away. If you hit them, it's always yeah. going to do 24. So that's the floor. Exactly. That's the floor. Okay. Continue, Projectile. Guy. We use various terms to describe these types externally, including borrowing items from other games. Oops. But I've settled on these. Hit scan. A projectile, a projectile that instantly hits. This mm -hmm. applies to most weapons of the game. Example, auto rifles, hand cans, fusions, fully drawn bows at some distances. At most distances, right. Non-hit scan. It's a projectile with travel time, sometimes having physics bounces and often having explosive damage. So rocket launchers, grenade roger, uh, launchers, mm -hmm. partially drawn bows, the toaster, Indeed. things that have oh, travel time. Yeah, how to time out. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, it's, uh, it's my paragraph. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Shotguns, spread angle, the cone that pellets come out in, not to be confused with one of the other types of cones, hashtag Drew, this determines the size of the outer ring below. Destiny 2, Destiny 2 shotguns don't have pure RNG, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, uh, though yes, it sure feels like it sometimes, which seems worth diving into. Yeah, I would really love to be diving into that. Uh, a shotgun shot contains 12 pellets, true, spread out across three rings as follows. We got the center ring, right? The inner ring, four wedges with one pellet each. Outer ring, seven wedges with one pellet each. So aside from the center, which is a fixed location, each pellet is only randomized inside a defined wedge angle and inner outer radius. That is true. If you fire a shotgun at a wall, you will notice a distinct pellet pattern. But it's how those, those pellets are, how they exist in each part of the pattern, which is the RNG. Yeah, th think of a dartboard. You have the center bullseye. Yeah, 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 then exactly. Next section is going to have four wedges with pellets, and then that outer is going to have seven wedges. Uh, I will continue. Um, season 15 introduces legendary stasis weapons, and we've seen some concern about how these are intended to work, particularly in PvP. Here are a few details. Stasis power weapons are in the power slot, but all other stasis weapons are in the kinetic slot. This is to avoid overcrowding the energy slot and so that it's reasonable to use one in match game content. Okay. The kinetic slot won't be renamed at this time. Interesting. Stasis weapons don't intrinsically do anything different from weapons of other damage types, but they are the only weapons that can roll with stasis perks. We generally intend stasis perks with slowing or freezing effects to have a kill trigger Oh god, I'm getting nervous already. Uh, this being easy enough to trigger in PvE and fun to use but not obnoxious to play against in PvP. That's a key sentence. That's a very key sentence. Uh, now that we've addressed Quick Play's permanent 100 handling buff, we see more people using the Quick Swap glitch. Yep. Uh-oh. Oh boy. Uh-oh. The, uh, the glitch uses combinations of inputs to animation cancel, allowing near-instant weapon swaps. We want the handling stat to continue to have value 
and don't want, for example, aggressive shotguns to lose their key downside, slow swapping speed, due to an unintentional side effect of the animation system. Fixed the quick swap glitch. Ooh, that's I, huge. That's very big. I always told people I didn't want to get too big into leaning or depending on the quick swap glitch because we've known it's been around forever. But uh, I didn't want to lean too hard on it because I always felt that one day they would take it away. Yeah, I mean, things like Ophidians. I guess today's that day. <laughs> yeah, Ophidians and things like that. Dexterity they lose, mods. They lose their value. Yeah. That, that's really important that they did that. Um, I, wonder how tw- I wonder how Twitter is reacting right now. Uh, my Twitch chat is lighting up. They are lighting up right now. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm here for it. That's good. Do you want to wanna take over or you want me to keep going? Sure, I can, I can go. And take it away. Running out of primary ammo has always been tact. Uh, has never been. Uh, oh, it has never been tactically interesting. Running out of uh, in hard PVE content, mm-hmm. or because you were in uh, going on a tear or rampage in the Crucible, was a weird and sometimes frustrating experience that we would like to not subject anyone to in the future. What? So all Sorry, primary ammo weapons now have infinite ammo. Dude, the rumor was true. Inertia override. There was, a, there was a Reddit post about that. Okay, yeah. go on. Continue. Yeah. Inertia override has been adjusted to account for there being no primary bricks. Drop mag's downside of reducing oh. reserve ammo is now almost meaningless. Reworked to be plus reload speed, take away magazine size. Well, well wait a minute. Wait a minute. If you're going to give infinite, what about fighting lion that runs on primary ammo? <laughs> are we going to have? Are you going to have unlimited uh, to, lion? To be fair, you already have unlimited fighting lion ammo. I mean, it's not difficult to acquire kinetic ammo, but you could sit at the back of the map and repeatedly lion people. Right? True. True. C- c- carry on. Compact carry arrow on. shafts upside of increasing reserve ammo. Likewise, they reworked it to plus reload plus handling. Updated some other perks that refer to reserves in a way that's no longer, no longer accurate. See notes on fighting lion and sweet business in the exotic section below. <laughs> yeah, okay, Target farming go. trials weapons is much more efficient in season 15. Ooh, good, and we good. have some cool new perks for players to play. We wanted to, uh, that we want to put on these trials weapons. So all trials weapons available in season 15 now have seven perks in each column was Whoa. five. Okay, okay. When max power levels on weapons launched, we were reissued several weapons. We know that. Mm-hmm, we saw how frustrated mm-hmm. players were having to regrind their favorite roles since the perk rules hadn't changed. Yeah. Based on that, our reissue guidelines from season 13 onwards were to replace most of those perks. Turns out that that was an overcorrection, a la <laughs> Exile's yeah. Curse. Exile's Curse, And yeah. that certain perks in the corruption. original pools had become part of the identity of a weapon firmly planted on it. Moving forward, the guidelines for reissues will be to remove the least useful two to three perks and add two to three newer perks they give the weapons some more options and re- it. may result in an entirely new top tier rolls without removing the old ones. Love it. We've made some small adjustments to the weapons reissued in 3.2.1 update to move these changes in the direction of the new reissue guidelines. Mm-hmm. If you're wondering why our community managers were asking for everyone's oh, favorite roles, now you know. Right. Okay. Yep. Added one or two of the original perks to each column for the Luna weapons reissued in 3.2.1. Oh. Lectern weapons. Since these can be target farmed, we're okay with increasing the size of the perk pool in this case. Added one of the original perks to one or both columns for the Dream and City weapons, Tiger Spike, Twilight, Abide the Return. And since mm-hmm. these can't be target farmed yet, we didn't want yet. to increase the size of the pools by more than one. That's good. Do you think that they're going to bring Firing Line back to Tranquility? Yeah, dude. That could be huge. Absolutely. Firing Line, uh, there was, uh, there's the multi-kill clip, Loud mm-hmm. Lullaby. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot. Oh, that's, that's go, big. Go, go ahead and take it away with archetypes. I'm going to take, take it away, baby. Uh, breach grenade launchers are increasing as a pain. Oh, we were literally talking oh, about this on stream It's today. time. It's time. Get, get, get Merc on the phone. Uh, increasing as a pain point in PvP. And with the shotgun nerf, we're seeing a small increase in usage. This change aims to reduce the ease of getting big splash damage for priming or cleaning up targets. We'll watch how things change and make further adjustments in a future update if needed. Note that we're fine with how they perform in PvE, so have compensated there. Oh, that's big. Okay, reduced blast radius by 0.4 meters, e.g. max blast radius decreased from 4.55 to 4.15. Minimum blast radius decreased from 3.8 to 3.4. Reduced splash damage by 20, which reduces total damage for a direct hit from 220 to 200, meaning that you can still kill 
a dude with a direct shot uh, before taking spike or proxy nades into account. Increased damage in PvE by 12% because of the above splash damage change results in a small overall buff to combined damage. Wither Horde is unaffected. Uh, that's, that's big. I feel like a lot of people are going to be happy about that. The, the yeah, non-grenade it, it, launch it, remains are going to be happy about it's that. It's one of those things. They went to both sides of the game. They, they knew that mm-hmm. there was an error there for them in PvE, and they buffed him. So, like, yeah. that's good. good. That's good. That's a, that's a good call. Um, uh, I'll keep going for a little bit. Uh, sure. While machine gun usage is surprisingly high, we felt that they weren't fulfilling their intended role in high difficulty content, ammo efficient, ad clear, and secondary single target sustained damage. Increased damage in PvE by 20%. That's kind of a big number. Thunderlord meta. I'm here Thunder for Lord it. Thunderlord meta. <laughs> I'm here for it. Uh, scout rifles and hand cannons have felt weaker than we'd like in hard PvE content. Hell yeah, dude. Increased damage versus miners by 15%. Perfect. You need to be able to one-tap red health bar dudes in PvE with a hand Perfect. cannon or a scout rifle, or they don't feel good. So far, Hard agree. Good so call. So far, I'm loving all of it. Thumbs up, dude. Why don't you take the fusion rifle part? Okay. I'm, I'm giddy right now. Fusion rifles have benefited indirectly from the mid-season 14 shotgun nerf, but fusion mm-hmm. rifles subfamilies weren't as different uh, from each other as we wanted, and weren't all that useful in a variety of content. Very true. So we looked at all the options we had for diversifying them and ended up with mm-hmm. these substantial changes. This isn't intended to be a global buff to fusion rifles, but we expect <laughs> some of these to be better counters to other weapons than they were previously. Note okay. that we also evaluated some other options, which are worth a little bit of discussion. Giving the projectile travel time. We did like the idea of this behavior in Destiny 1, but on uh-huh. investigation, found that there are networking issues with firing rapid burst of non-hit scan projectiles, and they didn't play as well as we wanted them to. We may look at that again in the future. But they're not doing it now. They're not doing it now. Okay, gotcha. These are, these are the theories. These, these are the theories. brainstorms. Okay, First, okay. rate of fire. This would, mm-hmm. uh, this would admit touching design data and audio for every single fusion rifle that they've ever shipped oh, well God. beyond the scope of what we wanted for the change. Okay. So now from here on, from the yeah, PvE that... damage buff on, these are actual changes right here. Okay, so, so they're, so they're increased... getting a 15% PvE buff. Uh, yeah, across the board. Pushed... Previously high impact. Okay, keep going. Yep. Push subfamilies further apart, adjusting mm-hmm. charge time, shots fired per burst, was 7 for all subfamilies, and damage. Know that the, quote, base means below, yeah. without battery packs, charge time mass work, adept charge time. High impacts charge slower, and while right. still strong, require more planning. Base charge time increased to one second was 0.86. Ooh, that's maybe going to hurt. Uh, that's essentially, that's merciless. That's, um, that's, a every, that's a Glaciaclasm, right? Isn't Glaciaclasm high impact? That's, I'm, um, I'm de- that's, de- that's sure. Devil's Ruin. Go. That's Devil's Ruin. Glacia, uh, high, liquid, liquid Coils. Glaciaclasm is high impact. Yeah, so they're, wow, from 0.86 to 1. That's going to hurt high impact frame so a that's, fair amount. That's Devil's Ruin. That, that's what Devil's Ruin's charge time is. Okay, shots, uh, yeah, one thousand. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay, shots yeah. per burst reduced from seven to five. Oh man, what? Reduce the total damage per burst. And in oh, place testing, hurt. we found that changing these in the open is super risky, but pre charging around corners or otherwise in safety is very effective. With oh, reduced shots wow. per burst, now these are less, less reliant on stability, so you can stack a little bit more range. I see. Precisions and adaptives are close to unchanged, base charge time unchanged. Shots mm-hmm. per burst unchanged, still seven. Okay. Very slightly increased total damage per burst, which is good. That way you don't need six mm-hmm. or five. Right, right. Uh, in, play st- uh, in play testing, we feel that these are very effective all around without stepping on the niches of high impact and rapid fires. I'll can I, can I could, could do a quick timeout here? Sure. Dude, we need more. Um, I ran up against a guy with a cracked uh, main ingredient in PvP. Like mm-hmm. it was an insane roll, and he was liquefying the lobby if the if we're getting a slightly total improved damage per burst i just feel like we need more they, if we're going to change if we're going to fundamentally change how these work we can't have these outliers laying around that can't be grinded for anymore do you know what i'm talking about they're uh, currently 38 per bolt that's so what of- do you think they're going to get to like 39 or 40 uh because I, I think the liquid coils is 30 uh, is 40 got it right now i'm i'm feeling like high impacts are getting the raw end of the deal but but we shall continue precisions are 39 adaptives are 38 
Okay. So, I mean, okay. it just needs the two damage. You need to land a five bolt kill. So if they yeah, both yeah. go to 40, it's good. It's a good buff. Okay. Okay. Continue right, for the rapid so fire. Rapid fire. Cha- uh, rapid fires team. charge faster, allowing them mm-hmm. to be used uh, reactively against charging enemies or aggressively when pushing forward. So the base charge time decreased from 0.54 to 0.46. So it's a faster charge time. Okay. Shots per burst increase from seven to nine. What? What? And the total damage uh, increase the total damage per burst. Well, yeah, if they're increasing pulse. Oh, dude, this is the play. Oh my god. In play, st- uh, in play testing, we found that these are very effective against shotgun rushers. The combination of them needing to be closer, having the shorter charge time, work well together. If you have good enough timing, you can fire two bursts with a rapid fire before a high impact can even finish that first charge time. Dude. Okay. So honestly, I mean, do, do you have a good, um, do you have a good Cartesian coordinate? <laughs> because I do. I, because I'm going to go farm for one right now. They're changing the number of bolts from seven to nine. With the increased shots per burst, these are now more reliant on stability, but with the increased damage, they're less reliant on range. So when they say increased damage per burst, they're talking about because it has nine now, right? So that's yeah. increased damage per burst. So I don't think that they're touching because they do 35 right now. <clears throat> They're doing 35. Yeah, you, gotta, you gotta really up that stability. Hardcore. But dude, if it has an even faster charge time, almost like think kind of like backup plan. Yeah. Um, and it, oh, I'm thinking. And you have a lot more uh, pellet or projectiles to land within a burst. Like that, that's gonna yeah. be really good. Like that, that could be like short range meta. Really. really. God in heaven, bro. Oh, oh. What does Fallout have here? In dim, what is this? Is this a rapid fire frame with under pressure, high impact reserves, and stability masterwork? Interesting. This is why we hoard Bungie. This is why (laughs) we. This. (laughs) Fallout. Why are you holding on to that fusion rifle? You're never gonna use it. Really. This is why we need. Really. All right. So they've adjusted several uh, fusion rifle perks and one mod. So backup plans implementation was incompatible. Incompatible with the fusion rifle changes, and we felt like the perk could use a rework anyway. So. They removed plus 100 to charge time, adjusted charge time multiplier from 0.85 to 0.7, and now scales damages by 0.8. Removed 100 of the charge time stat, adjusted charge time multiplier. It's a charge time multiplier now. Now scales damage by 0.8. So it'll still make your shots weaker, which I don't like about backup plan. But, but dude, like if you have nine shots in a, in a rapid fire frame that already has a fast charge time, it could be, it's basically near, near instant. True. It's basically near instant. Wow. We, we really need to do a lot of work looking at fusion rifles now. This is, this is like big sweeping oh, dude, changes. And it's dude. nice. Like sweeping. It's nice because dude, I love fusions. I know so much about them. <laughs> yeah. We've worked hard on that. Okay. Keep, keep going. Keep going. Liquid coils and accelerated coils needed a rework for similar reasons. Both converted mm-hmm. to scale charge time and damage instead of modifying the charge time stat. The final mm-hmm. effect is much of the same as before, but now these are more robust. However, they won't visibly change the charge time stat in the inspection screen. So, they won't visibly change it in the inspection screen, but it's still going to work. Still going to work. Okay. The adept charge time mod felt pointless, and we felt like it would still be balanced against other mods if it didn't reduce damage. So change mm-hmm. functionality to scale charge time directly instead of changing the charge time stat without adjusting the damage. Huh? Changed functionality to scale charge time directly instead of changing the charge. I don't understand the difference between. Uh, scale the charge time directly and the charge time stat. That doesn't make sense to me, but so I, I like I, that they're not adjusting the so damage. I, this is what I think. I think that that, that uh, mod or whatever, or liquid coils, like when they say the, the, the charge time scaler, so yeah. essentially I think like accelerated coils, whatnot, it gave you like a set number per archetype. Yeah. And it brought that number down or up depending on if you had liquid or accelerated. I think that they changed the functionality to scale charge time directly to each one instead of just doing like the broad percentage. Does that make sense? It so, does. Like, so like, as an example, like some could actually be better because they, it took three frames off. So now they're making it, you know, it's taking two. It's, it's going to take two instead. That's what I think it means. Fair enough. They're doing oh a, my God. a direct you know scaler just... to each archetype instead of just having the broad percentage of a perk. Dude, do you know what I just thought of? What? Uh, 
Null comp isn't null composure a rapid fire frame? It is. <laughs> oh, doesn't it come with heating up? It comes with heating up and it comes with uh and high impact reserves. And, yeah, or reservoir. Oh, a note on the charge time master work. A fusion's damage is determined by its charge time stat, similar to how most other weapons' damage is determined by the rate of fire. Masterworks can only increase weapon stats for performance reasons, so it's not possible to change how charge time maps onto damage without big scales to how charge time on how the charge time stat works. We, inve we investigated doing this by making the masterwork a perk, but this would cause fusion rifles to exceed the perk budget, resulting in bad things happening. <laughs> With the fusion rifle rework, we feel that this masterwork is more viable. It now rarely reduces bolts to kill, so may it feel free rarely not... reduces. Yeah, bolts because to honestly, kill. when I get a charge time masterwork, it's never yeah, masterwork. It's never no. Don't you don't put any effort into it because the more you up the charge time, the worse you're the fusion essentially gets. hurting. You're yeah, you're hurting the gun. So it now rarely reduces bolts to kill. Okay, we'll, we'll be the judge of that, but but yeah. We'll be watching to see how this plays out and uh, some of the <laughs> options to address in the future if it's still needed. They adjusted the fusion rifle stat order so it matches other weapons. Stability and handling were out of order. Uh, this is a big change to fusion rifles, including all exotic fusions, so we'll be watching for new major issues and we'll make tools needed. That's a good change for fusion rifles, man. That's um, good. Because, I mean, I, for the longest time, I thought, like, really all they needed to do was make... Those precisions and adaptives hit 40. They needed to hit 40 per bolt. Um, oh, but not, not only did they do that, there are also all, all the downfalls of fusions, such as the charge time mast works and mm -hmm. accelerated coils. It, it's making it yeah. not hurt the fusion. Uh, That's as, very, as a, very interesting. I feel like high impact uh, got hurt badly with this change, really badly. Meanwhile, rapid fire frame, dude, they got to be grinning from ear to ear. Yeah. I, I'm I'm gonna literally warm up the null composure, no joke, to bring um, into PvP. <laughs> what the, what is happening? And, oh and, god! And well, dude, hey, straight up, like oh god, yeah, sorry, go on. We'll we'll let you take it, but like, <laughs> oh god, Kickstart doesn't look that bad now. I was worried because the knee slide nerf, but you yeah, know, maybe. if that if it comes on a rapid fire frame, dude, you're doing more damage with nine projectiles. I feel like you don't even need it on a rapid fire frame, but. All right, we gotta we gotta move on here. I'm I'm looking at this picture. It's haunting me. Like we gotta right. read about it. Do okay, it. here we go. The Anarchy Grenade Launcher has been dominant for years now. We we're ignoring the season with the sweet grenade launcher artifact mods, of course. Being near mandatory for certain raid bosses, combined with double slug shotguns, as well as excelling as a solo weapon for ad clears in some encounters. We like that it's a great choice for hard solo content, do you? And trapping enemy spawns choke points, but don't want it to remain part of a dominant tactic for boss damage. And particularly, don't want it to be great for boss damage and add clears in a single encounter. With this change, we expect it to remain strong, but without being borderline <laughs> usable as a primary weapon. Okay, reduced total reserve and magazine ammunition ooh, from 26 to 16. Ooh, reduced damage by 30% versus bosses. Champions are not bosses. That, okay, okay. Let's look on the bright side. <laughs> At least they didn't fundamentally change how the weapon works. At least it's not like, oh, if you switch off the anarchy, the prongs disappear or whatever. 30% uh, is... It, dude, it's still goaded. It's... It's... Barely, at least they're not hurting the champ. You can still use it for champions, meaning that like, oh yeah, yeah it's still good for taking to a GM Nightfall. The the thirty on bosses may hurt. I I still think it's going to be good though. So I mean, it, I, I still it, think it's going to be good. There's you still, can change to another weapon. Yeah, right? there's you still going to be like nice end game. Yeah, combinations. I mean, the Anarchy was just nice because you stick them and start hitting them with yeah, a yeah. sniper or whatever. It's just going to change. I think that could have gone way worse. It could have. I think it could have gone way worse. Now, the, the 16 rounds, that's kind of rough, to be honest with you. Hmm. What if you put on double, uh, but then you wouldn't get, like, a sniper resist or... Yeah. I, or... Uh, I think it's still going to be good. I, th I think okay, it's, fair enough. It's still going to we'll be good. What, we'll see what happens. Not the best all-around forever option. Yeah, yeah. Which is what Xenophage. they want to get away from. Exactly. Xenophage was already top-notch, so it didn't need to benefit from the global machine gun buff. It does benefit from the damage per bullet buff to machine guns, but now has slower rate of fire to compensate, resulting in slightly lower damage per second 
but higher burst damage and sustained damage since it is now more ammo efficient. Reduced rate of fire from 120 RPM to 90 RPM receives less of the machine gun PVE damage buff. Oof. Um, I don't know if that was called for. Do you think that was called for? What do you, what do you think? So, I mean, essentially rate of fire, it went from igneous hammer to adored. Like as far as your, your fire rate, right? Yeah. So um, it's shooting hmm. slower, but they said that it's going to have a little bit better. It's going to have slowly I... lower damage per second, but higher chunk damage, burst damage. I mean, and that's okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Well. It's just a change. I mean, let's be real here. You, you can thump out those rounds. So. You can thump them out. It's mm, still going to be okay. I just don't know if that was, I don't know if that was called for. Oh, here we go. Can we get Cammy on the phone here? Uh, fighting lion has always been fun, but not dominant in PVE. So we weren't worried about the impact infinite ammo would have there. However, enabling fast unlimited grenade spamming was too much in PVP based on internal playtesting. So we've addressed that specific case without significantly impacting the feel in PVE. Fighting lion reserve ammo increased from a lot to infinite. Receives the same changes as other breach grenade launchers. Reduced base reload stat to zero. Breach grenade launchers with zero reload stat <laughs> reload very, very slowly. Now increases reload speed to its previous level on damaging multiple enemies with one grenade. We'll be keeping an eye on this, but believe it's in a good place with this change. And note that we're not going to over nerf on exotic with its own <laughs> subreddit. Does it really <laughs> have its own subreddit? I... I... Is it really? You shouldn't be manually reloading Fighting Lion anyway. Cammy's like, true. True. Uh, hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I. Uh, oh boy. You want to you wanna take this one? Sure. The Vex. We were cautious about tuning this when it launched, knowing that shipping a dominant weapon that has an incredibly low ownership would break the Crucible and aimed for, quote, balanced, but kind of erring on the side that not letting it ship out too strong. However... It fell short of being balanced. Ownership is much higher now, and we want it to be a strong desire as a, re Fuck. as a reward for the Vault of Glass. Yeah. PvE damage bonus increased by 40%. Good. Range stat Ooh. increased yeah. to be near best in class for all high-impact auto rifles. Ooh. They increased the stability stat. They reworked the catalyst to grant stability and damage after a kill. Holy crap. Increased the rate of fire from 360 to 390. Reduce linear fusion rifle mode charge time from 8.20 to 5.30. Same as a standard linear fusion, and it no longer oh. loses overcharge stacks when you stow it, except when in, in linear, linear fusion rifle mode, yeah. Good. Wow, that's a big change. Uh, huh. Huh. So the catalyst itself, after you get kills, you get better stability. So wow. what they did was they increased the stability stat base. Yeah. They reworked it yeah, to yeah. grant stability and damage and after damage. a kill. So I would assume that's a rampage. Something like that. Yeah. I mean, dude, I wonder how much that's going to affect the time to kill. Dude, D1 had crowd control on it, right? It had yeah. rampage on it. Um, and the rate of fire going up, that already also improves yeah, the dude, time to kill. So that's, it's, it's best in class, best in class max range. They increase the stability stat, rework the catalyst oh. to grant stability and essentially rampage. At least that's what it sounds like. Faster fire rate, more damage in PVE, faster charge time in linear fusion. Wow. You don't lose the stacks when you stow it. So it's not like Terraba or anything like that. Yeah. So dude, it's going to be on I the am, screen. I am and, so glad that I not only have the gun, but I have the exotic catalyst too. And hey, that would be a good time, Twitch chat, to know that on youtube.com slash falloutplays, I have a full guide on how to earn the exotic catalyst yes. for the Vex Mythic class. And uh, honestly, wow. from what I've seen so far, to everyone listening mm -hmm. and watching, I would get that catalyst done. Uh, immediately. It, immediately. It, it'd be one yeah. of those, uh, it, like on, on paper, it looks good. If you one of those, yeah. you don't want to be within your season going, getting this done. Yeah, so. get it done now. Oh, that's, that's Merciless. Really big. Hey, your favorite. Keep, yeah, keep it going. I had a 49 and 0 Merciless game once. Almost you had, make me sick. Almost had a 50 and 0 game. It was with Merciless. We had to touch on this anyway because the fusion rifle changes and figured mm. if we're in there, we might as well make a buff that we've been thinking about. <laughs> oh, updated, 
updated the perk to account for newer shots per burst. So it should build up charge rate as the same amount as the burst before. Reduce the damage penalty for increasing charge rate by 40%. Whoa. So it's going to do more damage. Oh, wow. That's going to be even more meta for PvE? Updated. Okay. They updated. It's accounting for the fewer shots per burst. So, oh, that's right. It's getting five. It's it, it's nerfed to five. Per, oh, right, yeah. right, right, right. So it's, because it's they're getting changing five. the number of bolts. Mm-hmm. So it should build gotcha. up charge rate at the same amount. So it's going to have five. It's still going to have kill clip on it when you get a kill and reload. But they reduced the, as, as you keep going faster and faster, it's not losing its damage. The toaster. Because yeah, of how the change. Going. Because of how the change uh, time stat works with the fusion rifle changes, we charge. made a uh, charge. Sorry, yeah, okay. uh, we, we made a small change to mm, avoid yeah. breaking this weapon. In playtesting, it makes almost no difference, but if I didn't mention it, someone would notice. Of course, they reduced the charge time from 0.8 to 0.78. Boo! So 0.04 <laughs> faster. <laughs> slightly reduced. Literally unplayable. Slightly reduced yeah. damage per shot. But it'll probably be able to one shot still. They're not going to make Jotun not be able to one shot. I, yeah. I was sorry. I was containing my giggling by reading ahead. The Um, Bastion (laughs) feels very strong with shotguns less dominant. So we've preemptively (laughs) adjusting at the Crucible. It's also super low use in PvE. We're buffing it there too. Reduce Mm. damage by 15%. Now cannot quite kill a guardian with one shot in the three burst that it fires. But let's be real here, dude. Like when a bastion's on you, yeah, you're done. You're done. Yep. I mean, well, you might be able to survive it to actually get your shotgun off or whatever it is. So they increase the spread angle by ten percent, so it's mm. blooming out more. Increased PVE damage by twenty five percent. So overall, around a ten percent increase in PVE. And remember, it has built in stopping champions. I don't know if that's enough. Give give me a uh, give me an F in the chat for Merc, our good friend Mercules, and the Bastion nerf. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna complain at all about Bastion getting nerfed. So I'm not gonna complain. It's going at to all. bloom more. It does less mm-hmm. damage in the Crucible. Yep. Yeah, but yay for more PVE damage. I might I, actually Bastion kind of hits really hard in PVE. If, yeah, it's it's not bad. It's really yeah. not. Um, it made, it, it with twenty five percent. That's like a free mm-hmm. rampage times two. But they did take more. away the bleed through. Correct. It can't do that anymore. No idea. Mm-hmm. I think that they no did. Idea. I think that they did. Sweet business's perk of refilling the magazine when picking up a prim- uh, primary ammo break no longer works in a world without primary ammo, so it's been adjusted. Oh, right. Now mm-hmm. refills magazine on picking up special and heavy ammo instead of primary. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> firing line. That's fair. Dude, all right, I'll, I'll take firing <laughs> line, and then you go from there. Okay, sounds We good. like the idea of this perk. It was just, oh, boy. It was just giving away a bit too much damage for almost free. Reduce the damage bonus to plus 20% precision damage for all supported weapon archetypes. Was highly viable depending on the weapon type. Will roll on some snipers, linear fusions, and machine guns. Maybe some other stuff in the future. Dude, we were just talking about that That's earlier good. in the stream. Yeah. Um, so I think it was 25% before. I think it was 25 before. 20 is still very good. It's still very good. And it, it very is. Good. It is free damage. But free it's, damage. One of, it's one of those things a lot of people don't have like that nice triple tap high impact reserved or four times yeah. the charm, you know, rapid fire yeah, frame yeah. sniper. This is something you can always gravitate to any a part of any LFG or GM or something at a distance to get damage with your fire team. And Vorpal, Vorpal is 15, <clears throat> right? Isn't Vorpal 15? I'll, I'll look it up right now. I'm pretty sure Vorpal is 15, but that would mean that technically firing lane, firing line would be more powerful than Vorpal. Uh, well, it will, Firing line has very specific, very activation specific. criteria. Whereas <clears throat> Vorpal is like do whatever you want. Like as long yeah. as you're hitting the guy, you'll be fine. But it's it's ultimately a little bit better <clears throat> in the end because if you have Vorpal, you can put mm-hmm. on like a boss spec, right? Yeah, yeah. And you can you don't have to be with your team, but with something like, like firing line, you can also put on a boss yeah. spec and just keep keep getting that damage. Yeah, fifteen. Okay, it's it's so, fifteen. Vorpal is fifteen. Yeah. So oh. firing line is the play. I'm cool. glad it's coming back. I'm, I really am. It's a good perk. Me too. Me too. Not the best, not the greatest, but it puts work. But not bad. Certain damage perks, sorry. <laughs> only affected high, uh, <laughs> only affected impact damage on explosive weapons. We've updated these specific perks to also increase detonation damage. Kill clip, rampage, adrenaline Whoa. junkie. I see. Because when you shoot a, so if you have a weapon with explosive payload or time okay. payload and you shoot a guy, there's two damage numbers, right? Damage mm-hmm. number number one is the impact number, meaning the bullet hitting the guy. 
And the second damage number is the explosive damage number. And Kill Clip would only <coughs> affect the smaller impact number. So they're updating it. That's a good change. That's a good change. It's a good change. Explosive payload is already a top tier perk on a hand cannon for PvP. That just kind of made it better. If you have a role with Kill Clip payload on it or something. You know? All right. All right, here we go. Oh, good. I'll read the, the lame stuff. Weapon VX, uh, VFX, I can talk, were all custom and some didn't meet our desired cool factor. So Word. we've rebuilt these to speed up the process of adding new weapons or updating old ones while updating the visuals at the same time. Updated all grenade launcher and rocket launcher VFX. Oh yeah. Legendary fusion and linear fusion rifles now have distinct damage type charge VFX. So you might be able to know what type of fusion rifle the guy around the corner has it's based on the noise. Yeah, based on the pre-charge. Interesting. We're devoting a lot of energy to the Witch Queen, and there are a ton of things changing in a few weeks, so we want to see how things shake out before deciding on further tuning. Fair. We'll be watching Season 15 launch closely and are ready to make some small adjustments as needed in the first half of the season. The more distant future, but still before the Witch Queen. Linear fusion rifles and caster frame swords are still not where we want them to be, so expect a few tweaks. We're also looking at underused or underempowered, oh sorry, underpowered exotics, and we'll be taking a pass at some of them, including, oh boy, <laughs> please don't tweak the arbalist. <laughs> Come on, guys. We're, <laughs> Bro, we're in a great spot. No. <laughs> Come on, man. It's like, it's like a teeter-totter. Didn't, didn't they have to tone down arbalist a couple months ago because it was too annoying? Hey, dude, like... In, okay, it, it, look, it, here, here we go. How about we use it for PvE? Can we do that? Can we do more we do. RB fun factor for PvE? Please. please yeah, don't in, touch anytime it for a PvE. dungeon comes up, dude, anytime a dungeon God, or a special. Just, just leave it alone. Don't, don't be touching Arbalist. Just for PvE only. People go please. RB. I'm, I'm literally begging you. Just don't touch. Arbalist. Hey, okay. I like the malfeasance buff. That'd be great. Sur Suros Regime, Cryosthesia, the mal oh, the malfeasance. That could be interesting. And more. Uh, if you have issues with spamming high rate of fire semiotic weapons as fast as possible, we've got something in the works for you. Oh boy. Priming a target and quickly swapping for a cleanup is easier than we'd like. So true. And we're looking at options for building towards faster swap speeds. Hmm. We've got a step at hitting both of these points coming. Good. Witch Queen and beyond. We've talked previously about wanting legendary weapons to have more identity based on their source and expect to ship a new system for this in or close to the Witch Queen. In Season 15, we tweaked exotic primary weapons to generate ammo quicker through ammo finder mods, and we have another change planned to make them more enticing in hard PvE content. That's all we got for our weapon changes for now. We're looking forward to seeing how the PvP and PvE meta shape, shape up once you all have your hands on them next week. Chris Proctor. God love that guy. Thank love you, Chris. Him. Thank, Thank you, Chris. you, Chris. Uh, moving on, moving on, cool guy. Read, read away. Guns, guns, guns. Oh, yeah. Is that a play on Boats, Boats, Boats from How I Met Your Mother? Anyway, <laughs> we're we still, still holding a lot of details on Season of the Redacted close to our chest, including the new Season 15 arsenal you'll start to discover next week. We don't want to show off some, uh, we do want to show off some things of the other weapons you're going to be earning. The next season's ritual quest weapons is a rocket launcher with the explosive Ooh. light perk. As in this custom, explosive light you'll perk. receive a new quest to earn this weapon, and then go to Gambit, Crucible, Vanguard, get the, the weapon theme orna ornaments as well through additional quests to customize the look. So oh. there it is. That's the it, weapon perk from the, uh, the Wendigo, meaning if you pick up an orb of light that you're, uh, you get more damage. Yeah. You can you can beef that bad boy out depending on how yeah. hard it hits already. Put on uh, the Godslayer warheads. Yeah, true. For even true, more true. damage, we're adding three weapons as post game rewards com for completing Vanguard strikes, Gambit, and Crucible matches. These will drop randomly after completing these activities with random rolls. Oh. Here's a sneak peek. So we have, wow, I think an auto rifle, a for sure sidearm, uh, scout rifle, and a sidearm. And a scout. That looks like a yeah. silent scout. Dude, that scout rifle looks wild. I that's, love the design. I really do love that's that design. Sweet, dude. The auto rifle can fuck off. We've had plenty <laughs> of designs with that stupid. Uh, yeah, whatever. We've had enough of you. Uh, that scout rifle looks hot. It, it very well might be like one of those PDX like reworks from D1. Looks like one of those Suros weapons. That's like that's a fool's remedy, full auto sidearm. Yeah. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. 
Oh God! Why did I? Oh! I, I immediately ruined my own hype, dude. Okay, look at the look it. at the weapons. Look at I the weapons. It. The sidearm. Where do you get the sidearm from? Where do you get the sidearm from? Which activity? Vanguard. Okay, what what activity do you get the red auto rifle from? The scout's gambit. <laughs> I I know. <laughs> the scout is gambit. Of here we go. This is, is a good bro. one. This is a good one. Damn we have it, plans okay. to freshen up the loot pool for the Prophecy Dungeon. We've seen a lot of feedback to bringing forward weapons, uh, the original reward from Trials of the Nine, and thought that adding these to the Nine-themed dungeon was a great fit. These weapons have been upgraded with random rolls, and certain ones will drop from specific counters in the Prophecy Dungeon. All the Trials of the Nine weapons, the shotgun, sidearm, all of them, pulse rifle, mm. sniper, they're back. Good call. Dude, um, oh. these are great. I actually really enjoyed a lot of... I actually loved the uh, the sniper and the auto rifle from the OG Trials of the Nine. That's kind of cool. They're bringing those back. I know a lot of people would be like, recycled content, bro. But like, like, bro. Yeah, whatever. Bro. I mean, yeah, whatever. I, it's, it's, I, I get that. I get it. Recycled content, boo. But like more weapons to use in current meta, yay. All right. So take, I'm, I'm down, dude. I'm down. Take us home? I'll take you home, baby. On top of all these weapons, we are also updating the world pool with some fresh drops. Here are new weapons you can expect to start seeing pop up in the wild. Oh, uh, okay. So that's yeah. the. Is, isn't that what the? Is, is isn't that, that the? Isn't that the four burst new monarchy? Is that the Hawka? I think it is. Yeah, I think I deleted. We mine. haven't. I can't we haven't seen it. a four burst. So it's been a while since Blast Furnace. It's been a while. Yeah. Um, uh, that's, that's the uh, dead what orbit is that scout rifle. The dead orbit scout rifle. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, and then, yeah, I can't remember what some of these are called. What's that hand cannon? That's the Manet. This, the, this is the Black Scorpion, right? This is the Black Scorpion? No, that's not the Black Scorpion. No, no, no. Am I confusing it with something else? That's, it's, it's either the Annual Skate or Here, the Manet. Two, two. Da, 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 da. I think the auto rifle is the Scathe Lock. I think my Twitch chat is correct. Yeah. Might be yeah. the Scathe Lock. Oh, is the Black Widow? The Black Widow, that might be it. That's the Vice. Wait a minute, is that the Minuet 42? Hold on. Yep. Oh, dude, I love that gun. Let me look that up on Light Dodge. It's either, like I said. Oh, wait, mm, no, I don't think it is the Minuet. Because that has kind of a different design on the side. I'm not sure. Maybe it is. I don't know. It could be. It could that, be. Yeah, you're right. That might be just a regular Pulse. Not the 4 Where, burst. Up, up here? Yeah, the no, new Monarchy one. Oh, I thought that was a 4 Burst. I thought it was. Maybe not. Yeah, like legal action. Time, right? Three burst. The, the legal action. Oh, it's a three burst. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Interesting. G hey, man, GG's more chat. weapons. I, I like it. Yeah, I'm down. Never okay, a bad thing. I, yeah, yeah. Pretty good stuff. Uh, all right, we got the player report crap. The player support team. If you have, uh, you know, any reports, you can add them to the old, old uh, known issues list. Anything here important? Yeah, well. Update 3.3.0. You want to talk about the, oh, we'll talk about it here. It's, it's the cross play names. The what? Uh, just, just a reminder to everyone. I did it today. Like it took me that long. The display name of the first platform that players log in with to play oh, Destiny right, Two, beginning right, at right. 10 a.m. on August 24th, on, will become mm -hmm. the player's bungee name. So you you <laughs> got to make sure that you <laughs> that you're on top of that. Yeah. And remember, on Tuesday, August 24th, we got maintenance. So which is going to start at what 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. Uh, you'll get removed from activities. And they're also doing the, uh, the whatchamacallit, the, the showcase that day. So that'll be a damn big day. And then they're expecting maintenance to conclude. Oh, wait, hold on. You'll be able to log back in at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And then eventually D2 maintenance will conclude while we'll be able to play the game. And don't take off on Tuesday. Don't take off. The, uh, the servers are going to get dicked over. Take off if you want to take off work. <laughs> For playing season 15, Wednesday. take off Wednesday, man. Take off Wednesday. Don't take off Tuesday. You're not going to have any time. All right. Claim your rewards. Cool. Yeah. Claim all your rewards, bro. Get that stuff. Do that. You, you turn on all your Vanguard tokens, cool guy? If I had any. <laughs> I have like 900 that I have to turn in. Do it, bro. So, so many. Oh, right. The crossplay names. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Crossplay will go live ooh, early. Ooh, okay. How come they still okay. haven't released the name of the season, bro? This is uh, crazy. I, I, I do have something to talk about. You do. Uh, as okay. part of his known issues. Cause I mean, that's one of the first things I was thinking about. Cause 
Remember they teased the champion mods linear fusions was one of them? Oh yeah, for sure. The Arbalist linear fusion will not work with anti-champion mods in Season of the Redacted. In a future update, anti-bearer oh. will be added as an intrinsic perk for the weapon. Oh. Dude! Intrinsic perk for the weapon? It's going to have anti-barrier and destruction built break built in. Wait, where is that? Hold on. Dude, that, um, that's a little nugget right there, dude. Yeah, the Arbalist exotic linear fusion will not work with anti-champion. Wow. Guaranteed anti-barrier? Okay, I can get behind that. That's... I can that's get really that. good. Yeah. That's really good. That's not, that's not bad. Yeah, not bad. I think just I'm, I'm thinking collectively here. Everything on top. <laughs> Obama. Oh, geez, we have you, Obama. you know the scavenger perk changes. The ability yeah. changes. Uh, there's some mod changes. Total rework of fusion rifles. There, there's a lot. There's a lot to look forward to. It's going to bring subclasses up. It's going to bring weapons up. Um, yeah. And then of course it's everything that's going to be within this new season. So whatever the new activity is that we always get. Uh, those new weapons, those new perks that they've talked about, bringing yeah. back old weapons. I, I mean, it's kind of a big twab, dude. It's a, <laughs> collectively, it's it's big. It's it's sandbox yeah. changing, like everything. Like the game's gonna be changed, like how we play it, which is good. Dude, I'm always yeah. down for that. Uh, well, cool guy. Once again, I really appreciate you joining me for another twab raid. I think the people are liking it, dude. Yeah. I think we have good uh, conversation. I'm I'm digging the vibe. So I, thank dude, you very much. I love it, man. I love talking Destiny with you. Hell yeah, dude. All right, I'm going to do my thing here. Hold on. So, okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Click the period at the end of the TWAB. There's a period at the end of the TWAB. Yo. Is there an Easter egg? Hold on. Oh, God. Yes. Yes, there before, is. Before we go. Wait a minute. What is it? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, Cosmo. You card. All right. Later, y'all. I'll see you tomorrow. Later, guys.